Elizabeth Christine Pena was born in 1977 to Adolf and Melissa Pena in the sprawling metropolis of Houston, Texas. The second of three children, Elizabeth grew up alongside her younger siblings, Michael and Rachel, in a bustling household filled with the joys and chaos of family life. As a teenager, Elizabeth attended Waltrip High School. It was here in 1993, amidst the crowds of students, that 16-year-old Elizabeth met 15-year-old Jennifer Lee Ertman. Born in 1978 to Randy and Sandy Ertman, Jennifer was the beloved only child of her parents, particularly her father Randy. Despite being a year apart in age, Elizabeth and Jennifer bonded quickly, their friendship bridging the small gap between them. Both sets of parents approved of the relationship, with Elizabeth's father seeing modest and sweet Jennifer as a positive influence on his daughter. Prior to starting at Waltrip, Elizabeth had shown some signs of rebellion, but with Jennifer by her side, she seemed to find a new sense of direction. Her father was relieved to see Elizabeth straighten up her act, thanks in large part to her new friend. On June 24, 1993, the girls cemented their friendship when they were invited to a pool party hosted by their friend, Gina Escamilla. Jennifer's devoted father, Randy, drove her to Elizabeth's house, where Elizabeth's mother, Melissa, then took both girls to Gina's Spring Hill apartment. The carefree party was a chance for Elizabeth to share stories from a recent family trip to Florida. She excitedly showed off the gifts she'd bought with her 16th birthday money, a pager and some new clothes. As the party wound down, the girls realized they were running late for their 11.30 p.m. curfew. In a hurried decision that would forever change their lives, the girls opted to take a shortcut home along the railroad tracks near T.C. Jester Park. The darkness concealed the dangers of this route, merely a mile from Elizabeth's Oak Forest neighborhood. But the girls saw it as a quick way to make curfew, unaware of the tragic outcome to come. When 11.30 p.m. came and went without the girls' return, their parents began to worry. Frantic calls were made, friends were questioned, and soon the police were alerted that both Elizabeth and Jennifer were missing. As their loved ones launched a desperate search, the girls' fateful choice to take that shortcut ensured they would never make it home again. In the early hours of June 25th, Elizabeth and Jennifer's shortcut brought them face to face with unfathomable evil. Along a secluded path near T.C. Jester Park, the girls crossed paths with members of a local gang called Black and White. The gang members, Peter Cantu, brothers Jose and Venancio Medellin, Efrain Perez, Raul Villarreal, and Derek O'Brien, were initiating 17-year-old Raul through a brutal hazing ritual. When the girls happened by, the sadistic gang saw an opportunity for even greater violence. They forcefully dragged the terrified girls deep into the woods. There, for over an hour, Elizabeth and Jennifer were subjected to horrific gang rapes by each member of the group. The girls were assaulted orally, vaginally, and anally, with at least two men raping them at all times. According to testimony, Jennifer and Elizabeth made repeated eye contact during the attack, looking to each other for comfort in their anguish and despair. Both girls struggled fiercely, fighting back against their attackers with all their might. When the savage assaults finally ended, the leader Peter Cantu ordered the girls murdered to eliminate any witnesses. What followed was a barbaric killing spree. Jennifer was strangled first with a belt before they used her own shoelaces to finish her off. Elizabeth was then strangled with her shoelaces after having two of her teeth kicked out by Cantu's steel-toed boots. After death, both girls' bodies were stomped and kicked to make sure they were really dead. Leaving behind a murder scene of unimaginable brutality, the gang collected their victims' belongings and left, bragging about their crimes later that night. The next day, an anonymous tip led police to find Elizabeth and Jennifer's battered bodies discarded near the tracks. Dental records were needed to identify them. Quick police work led to the gang members' arrests on June 29th, less than a week after the horrific murders. In the aftermath of the devastating murders, Houston mourned for Elizabeth Pena and Jennifer Ertman, two precious young lives cut short by unspeakable violence. As police built an ironclad case against the black and white gang members, the girls' grieving families were left to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. Jennifer's parents, Randy and Sandy Ertman, 
could barely comprehend the loss of their only daughter, while Elizabeth's parents Adolf and Melissa Pena were crushed under the weight of their grief. At the trials, graphic details emerged about the girls' horrific final hours. Jennifer had desperately tried to save Elizabeth before being forced into the woods herself. Elizabeth watched in anguish as Jennifer was murdered first. The cruelty of their deaths shocked the nation. Justice came for the killers. Gang leader Peter Cantu, Jose Medellin, Derek O'Brien, Efrain Perez, and Raul Villarreal received the death penalty. Minor Venancio Medellin was sentenced to 40 years for his involvement. Between 2006 and 2010, O'Brien, Jose Medellin, and Cantu were executed for these savage crimes. The executions provided little comfort to the victims' families, who continued to mourn two innocent lives stolen far too soon. Elizabeth and Jennifer were laid to rest by heartbroken parents, their graves becoming memorials to the lasting impact of their short lives. Their schools and communities honored them with vigils and plaques, but nothing could fill the void left behind. After decades of pain, Jennifer's father, Randy Ertman, died in 2014, reuniting with his beloved daughter in death. Jennifer's mother, Sandy, eventually moved away, attempting to start a new life free of constant reminders and tragic memories. The city that failed to protect them vowed to do better for the next generation of girls. Self-defense courses were offered in schools in Elizabeth and Jennifer's memory. A charity run took place annually to fund scholarships in their names. Though gone, Elizabeth and Jennifer live on as symbols of friendship, youth, and the urgent need to protect society's most vulnerable. Their boundless potential, extinguished far too soon, drives their communities towards greater safety, compassion, and justice. In the three decades since the devastating murders of Elizabeth Pena and Jennifer Ertman, their enduring memory has left an indelible mark on their city and state. Though gone, they continue to inspire change. The girls are icons of the victims' rights movement that their grieving parents championed in Texas. After advocating extensively, victims' families now have the right to witness executions in the state. While this small comfort did little to heal their broken hearts, Adolf Pena and Randy Ertman found solace in sparing others from facing injustice alone. Beyond shaping state law, Elizabeth and Jennifer's lives and brutal deaths illuminated the ongoing need to protect society's most vulnerable. Houston responded by developing new community outreach programs to keep kids safe. Schools now teach self-defense to female students, equipping them with skills and confidence to escape harm. Charity runs are held yearly in the girls' honor to fund scholarships and crime victim advocacy. At Waltrip High School, a memorial ensures students never forget Elizabeth and Jennifer's enduring legacy. Their names remain etched in stone, representing all the potential their young lives held. Near the site of their murder, a plaque memorializes them as innocents who perished far before their time. Though the girls themselves are gone, their powerful life force endures. It is carried on through their families, who continue to feel their absence while honoring their memory. It echoes in the halls of their schools, which mourn the loss of two students so full of promise. It lives on in their community, which embraces its most vulnerable members to ensure no more innocents suffer their horrific fate. Jennifer and Elizabeth's devastating murder shocked the nation, but it also galvanized a city towards light instead of darkness. Their names are now synonymous with friendship, youth, and the soaring potential within each of us, no matter how brief our lives. Most importantly, they represent our collective responsibility to build a society where such innocence can thrive free from fear, protected by compassion. Though their bright futures were cut short, the empathy and change their story inspired continue to burn boldly. Their light guides generations towards greater justice, safety, and understanding. Though gone from this world in these important ways, Jennifer and Elizabeth live on, 